bit of a cat, uh, clickbait title, perhaps, but uh, the idea is uh, we're going to talk about uh, this code that we're developing where we've been trying to use a uh, feature of modern Fortran, and uh, then when we try to uh, port that onto uh, modern architecture like GPUs, we ran some difficulties, and uh, this is how we went about solving it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this work's being done as part of the ASMA project. So this is a large uh, collaborative project between uh, several universities led by APCC. Uh, so Bristol, Warwick, Cambridge, Oxford are involved and then also some industrial partners. And uh, the idea is that we want to uh, be able to simulate aero engines with a high enough fidelity that you can take that, uh, that uh, result as uh, being sufficiently accurate to then go and stick it on an airplane. Uh, at the moment, if you want to do that, you have to currently actually build an engine and destroy it several times, which costs uh, tens of millions of pounds. So it's really a big uh, cost saving uh, potential here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, if you want to simulate a, a jet engine, you've got all sorts of physics going on. So you've got the aerodynamics of the flow through the uh, blades, uh, the forces of uh, the air on the on the blades. And also, uh, obviously, it's also very hot. So uh, you need to consider how that affects the structure. And then uh, in terms of like uh, size of things going on, you've got uh, droplets, which are on the order of microns, all the way up to the engine itself, which is uh, several meters in diameter. So uh, really this requires uh, very high performance and scalable code that can run on the largest computers we can uh, get access to. Uh, so as part of this project, uh, we're developing this uh, CFD code called Asimov CCS. Um, it's just a bit of information about it if you're familiar with CFD. So uh, these are the capabilities it needs to achieve. Uh, but I think really the main thing of interest uh, for this audience here is the fact that uh, we've written in modern Fortran. Uh, and the choice for that was uh, based on uh, the familiarity of the people who'd be using it with Fortran. But uh, based on some previous experience, we wanted to exploit uh, features that are only available in the newer standards uh, to allow us to write uh, more modern code. Um, so the reason we uh, took this approach for using uh, the, the more modern standard is uh, the previous codes we worked with, uh, they often end up very tied to uh, their particular dependencies. So a particular linear solver suite might uh, end up intertwined all the way throughout your code. If you want to um, avoid uh, this happening, then uh, it's nice to use the uh, generic interfaces that the modern Fortran standards have. So to give an idea of what this looks like, uh, I have some code snippets uh, from CCS on the right here. So uh, the user might uh, set up a field by calling these interfaces, uh, saying how they want their field to be laid out, what they want to call it, and so on. But at no point uh, does any of their code mention the fact that they're using Petsy, which is currently our sort of de facto uh, requirement for uh, handling linear algebra uh, algorithms. But uh, this is purely uh, to do with time. So if someone wanted to, they could come along and implement a Trillinus backend and none of the user code should have to change because it's all generic. Um, so that, uh, yeah, so that design allows us to avoid this uh, uh, sort of lock-in problem. Um, and we've also been able to use the interfaces uh, in other places. So uh, often in CFD codes, you have uh, different algorithms depending on uh, certain physical features of the flow. Um, Often this will end up uh, with an if statement uh, determining what you want to do. So the idea we had here was to also use the types to uh, resolve uh, what particular numerics you wanted to use. Uh, unfortunately, though, the, the the way that this gets resolved uh, in Fortran means that you still have to write these kind of uh, type selection statements because otherwise uh, it doesn't know what to do. So something perhaps to look at in the future is using more of the um, object-oriented features. And because this uh, is being called inside a very tight loop, so it has a, a potential to be very, rather inefficient. So that's uh, where we are on the software side of things. Uh, so if we look at the hardware, then probably everyone's very familiar with what's going on. But uh, this is uh, data taken from the top 500. So across the past 10 years, uh, if you look at systems that are uh, using GPUs and using accelerators, uh, then they start from a relatively low number and then as a uh, by now, they're pretty much dominating the entirety of the uh, top 10 of the top 500. And likewise, if we look at the fastest computer in each given list, then uh, for the past 10 years, it's uh, 
trending pretty consistently towards uh, GPU accelerated architectures. So although we're working on Arch 2, if we want to uh, be able to run on the next generation of machines, then we're probably going to have to be able to port our code uh, onto a GPU machine. Uh, so this is where a problem comes in with Fortran. And so this uh, was the uh, a report released by, uh, uh, what was it, Los Alamos um, uh, this year. So I think it's been discussed a few times. It's been to any of the other Fortran sessions. Um, and this is where my comment about economics comes in because uh, these two points I've highlighted here, uh, what they're really saying is that uh, there's no impetus behind the compiler developers to necessarily support uh, these new hardware in the same way as there is for the C++ compilers, simply because the largest users are the national labs, whereas, you know, Fort, uh, not Fortran, Facebook and uh, Google want their compilers to be very efficient on the latest hardware. Um, so this uh, does present a problem for us. And we uh, hit it quite hard when we tried uh, initially looking at uh, GPU accelerators. So <clears throat> we test our code across a range of compilers. So we've got the um, Cray compiler suite, G GFortran, Intel. So we've got a fairly broad range. Uh, and that ensures that uh, the code we write is, is fairly portable. But um, at some point, someone decided to have a go with the NVIDIA compiler. This isn't intended to pick on NVIDIA, but uh, their uh, compiler at the time wouldn't support uh, resolving uh, generic interfaces based on user-defined types, which uh, is something we've used very extensively. So if we were to remove this, it would mean essentially a rewrite of the entire code, uh, which wasn't something I wanted to do. Um, and this is likewise true of, it uh, seems, most of the Fang-derived compilers as well. Uh, so obviously we're very concerned that we'd, uh, by trying to uh, write modern code, locked ourselves out of modern hardware, uh, which was a bit of a worry. Uh, so earlier on this year, we joined the uh, UK GPU hackathon, uh, because then we'd be able to work directly with some NVIDIA mentors to uh, investigate how we could go about addressing this. And one thing we do know that we can do is uh, we could build PETC uh, with accelerator support, so we could at least offload the linear uh, algebra part of our solver. but. Uh, anyone who's worked with GPUs will tell you that the best way to kill your performance is to transfer data back and forth. And so we'd have half our code running on the CPU, and then every time you do a solve, you'd have to move back and forth. So although it would demonstrate acceleration, it probably wouldn't be worth it. Um, but just to check that we could in principle do this, uh, we uh, ran a profile using the NVIDIA tools uh, with the accelerated version of PETC, and this shows the kind of behavior that we expected. So each of these gray blocks is running on the GPU, and that's uh, the PETC linear solver. And each of these white blobs is where the code is having to come back to our uh, user code, do something in the CPU, and transfer data back and forth. Um, so uh, this is going to be a bottleneck, and we want some way of addressing this. Um, but the fact is that we've got a Fortran code calling into a library which has a, uh, accelerator support, so it kind of indicates how we can approach solving this problem. And this is actually something that uh, one of the mentors we work with had uh, investigated in the past. So uh, what often happens in Fortran is you have a set of um, compiler characteristics that you want, but they're not available in, they're not entirely available in one compiler. So you might want um, the GPU offload capabilities of the NVIDIA compiler, and in our case, the uh, modern Fortran support from GFortran. Uh, so Jeff Hammond, who is one of our mentors, had uh, looked into this and written a blog post about the approach we ended up using, uh, if anyone uh, is, would like to look into that in further detail. But uh, the basic idea is uh, in Fortran, you can now use this uh, thing called bind C. And uh, this serves two purposes. One of them is to enable you to call C code from Fortran. Uh, and the other one is uh, to enable C code to call Fortran. So uh, basically, you can use this at both ends where your high-level uh, GFortran code thinks it's calling a C library. And then you can rewrite a, a very simplified kernel for a, a GPU offloading and wrap that in a bind C interface so it looks like C. So essentially, you have uh, two parts of your code that both think they're talking to C. But in fact, you can keep everything in Fortran, which is uh, what we'd ideally like to do to keep the language situation at least fairly simple with a, a single language. Um, so essentially, you're tricking the compilers. 
Uh, so one of the issues with this is that uh, Fortran have quite diff quite uh, different memory models. So if you want to pass complex data structures back and forth, you need to uh, take care of all the data marshaling. So uh, the advice we were given is if you if you keep it to a fairly simple interface that looks sort of like a blast, then so everything's either a number or just a one dimensional array, then that means the compiler can do most of the work for you, and it's a uh, greatly simplifies the implementation. Um, in our case, we were passing some 2D arrays, so this means that we have to flatten these out. And so really the point of this is it's proof of concept, so the performance at this point is not a major concern. Um, and so this is what it ends up looking like. So I'm sorry if the code's a bit small, but uh, although uh, using modern approaches in Fortran has caused this problem for us, it also gave us a little bit of assistance because it means everything's very modular. And so we were able to uh, take, for example, the Poisson equation, which is one of our core problems. Uh, we can write a new submodule, which is uh, purely designed for this uh, specific use case and doesn't affect the rest of the code, and uh, extract the uh, coefficient generation, which is to be passed off to Petsy into this uh, kernel subroutine, which we're going to uh, wrap with bind C. And so that uh, handles all the data passing for us from our high level side of the code. And then we can write this kernel in uh, a form which is more acceptable to the uh, NVIDIA compiler. And as you can see, whereas in our code, we uh, tend to do uh, lots of operations based on interfaces and uh, sort of our, our, our user defined types, uh, this is much more straightforward. It's uh, essentially all either integer or real arrays and uh, straightforward loops over those to uh, perform the particular operations that we want. <coughs> and again, this all gets wrapped by bind C to present something that looks like a C library for the uh, G Fortran compiler to call. So actually implementing it's quite straightforward. The real difficulty comes in when you want to link it because you have a different whole bunch of libraries that you need to link. Uh, so what you have to do, if you were facing a similar uh, case of this and you wanted to use this in your code, then uh, essentially what you have to do is use the uh, various show me features of the different uh, compilers that uh, explain what libraries are going to link for you, uh, manually copy those out. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you actually have to use an uh, a C compiler to link everything together because otherwise the Fortran compilers will look into their module files and get very upset because they're all incompatible with each other. But, uh, so with a bit of... Um, trickery, you can hide that all away from the Fortran compilers, and it eventually works. So here is uh, evidence of it working. So as I said, it's uh, very much a proof of concept that I wanted to demonstrate that we can use uh, GPUs, not necessarily that they're getting any uh, performance from that at this point. So fortunately, it hasn't come out very well on the slide, but this <laughs> uh, this little blob here of how it is, is where our code is actually running on the GPU. So, um, from our perspective, this is a, a great success because as far as we th were aware, we were totally uh, locked out of the GPU ecosystem. Um, we still have to handle how to get the data into the linear solver at this point, but we now know that there's a, a, a way towards doing that. Um, so in terms of next steps uh, for this project, so we've demonstrated that we can run our code on the GPUs. And uh, we haven't had to tear everything down and start from scratch, which is uh, a nice place to be in. Uh, as I mentioned, there's still a, an issue with uh, moving data back and forth between actually computing coefficients on the GPU and solving the problem on the GPU. However, with uh, these uh, new super chips coming out, which uh, place GPUs and CPUs on the same uh, bus, uh, apparently coming with that is a sort of a smart memory management. So in theory, that should actually take care of the problem for us. And um, finally, we need to look at the newer versions of the, the Fortran, uh, the NVIDIA compilers, because actually by uh, sitting down and discussing our problems with the NVIDIA mentors, they've been able to uh, go back and discuss these with uh, the compiler developers. Uh, yeah, so to, to conclude, um, modern Fortran is a very nice language for developing high-level code in, despite what people say. Uh, but there is the issue that the 
progress in terms of these new standards, which bring uh, very useful features, uh, isn't necessarily evenly spread. And so that can make uh, portable development a bit more challenging. And uh, as an example, this MPI FO8, mo FO8 module is 15 years old and still you can't rely on being able to use it with different tools. It's uh, something I find very annoying. Um, yeah, so uh, often the features you want is uh, actually comes from a combination of compilers. And uh, this, I think, is driven by these uh, economic factors I mentioned. So vendors are going to develop uh, or focus on things that customers are asking them for. And uh, on the other side of the open source things, that's going to be more driven by what people have time and interest to do. So uh, this trick of being able to uh, interface the two allows you to get around these problems when you hit them. And uh, lastly, uh, maybe this is obvious to other people, but I thought you know you had to be the person buying a supercomputer for the uh, vendors to take notice of your problems. But uh, by working with NVIDIA, they've uh, at least started trying to address the problems for us. So that's a nice thing to know. Um, so finally, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the funding from the uh, EPSRC Asimov uh, project grant and uh, also all the help and support from our mentors from NVIDIA as part of the uh, National Hackathon. And just lastly, with my uh, EPCC hat on, uh, as I'm talking to a room full of RSCs, uh, often it can be challenging to find funding for RSE type work. So if you're not aware of it, there's this thing called the ECSE program. And uh, the idea with this program is uh, to either port codes to the Archer 2 machine or to optimize them uh, if they're already running there. Uh, if, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, there's a call actually opening this month and you can get up to 18 months of effort on this. And uh, it funds a variety of uh, projects. So actually, Atomov CCS has made it into this, but uh, it's not just for CFD codes. Uh, you've also got uh, Cast Step, which is a, like a dynamics package um, and uh, yeah, various other projects. So if you are interested, uh, there's more information at this link, which I should be able to find through the Arch2 website. And uh, thank you very much for listening. So I've got a few questions for a few more coming in. Uh, so the top one at the moment is uh, is the uh, is the Open MP5 uh, target equal GPU device a useful for standard approach? Uh, so we were pushed away from looking at that. Uh, we were encouraged to use the OpenMCC one, but uh, I think uh, again that's a feature of newer compilers. So it's it's always you're chasing whatever standard. So I think the uh, compilers we had at the time didn't have support for that. But uh, with, with OpenACC, you're already using a directives based approach. So, uh, although it's not necessarily trivial, it shouldn't be too difficult to begin exploring between one and the other. It's just something we've not had time to do with uh, OpenMP5. Uh, is there a need to unmangle any of the C calling conventions caused by calling Fortran with bind C? And if so, is this fairly simple boilerplate work? Uh, yes, so uh, we avoided that by, uh, this is why we were going for what's, uh, what was described as a, a BLAST-like interface. Uh, basically, if you keep everything flat in memory, then it's uh, quite straightforward, whereas if you have uh, more involved data, so even just two-dimensional arrays, then you have to handle how the different Fortran compilers lay this out. And uh, so if you do want to know more about that, that's uh, I would recommend visiting the uh, blog, which was on a previous slide. Uh, next one is: uh, Can you use a C compiler? Can you use a C compiler other than NVC? I think you also mentioned you used NV4 as well. Yes. Uh, so the reason we had to link it with NVC was because uh, it was to get the correct Open ACC library linked in at the end. I think in principle you could use another one, but you probably whatever your accelerator Fortran compiler is, you probably want to use its family of compiler as the linker as well in the end. Uh, okay. Uh, do you think the code would be more efficient with a rewrite? I, oh, I guess I, you said it was efficiency was a concern at the moment. Yeah, so at the moment we're more concerned about performance on CPUs. Um, so, for example, the, the need to flatten out the arrays uh, to pass into the GPU is going to incur an overhead. Um, 
but because of uh, the project's uh, focus on Archer 2 at the moment, it's not really a critical thing to get it running efficiently on GPUs. It's more for the next step we wanted to know that we can run on GPUs. And so, yeah, that's something we know we could address. It's just we, it's a question of time and effort. I guess, do you think you'll do that in the future? Or that yeah, possibly, because, uh, I mean, it, it would probably actually have some benefits on the CPU as well anyway, because uh, this data layout uh, maybe isn't necessarily ideal at the moment either. Okay. Uh, in reference to buying C, uh, I, Jeff, question, uh, was part of a group that did this with some clever linking in the 90s to get uh, old school F77 code to work with C dynamic memory. This is probably a bit too technical for scientists to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to have a look at buying C now. Thank you very much for the talk. I'm glad that it's useful. And finally, on here I've got would changing the interface to an object-oriented approach instead work? Um, and is polymorphism supported by your compilers of interest? Uh, so the main reason for using uh, the object oriented approach, I think, would be not having to do the type checks within uh, looping code. Uh, I mean, essentially, we're doing polymorphism on the function calls rather than on method calls. So it's just which way around you prefer to put your uh, subroutines. Um, I think, though, if you went all the way down that path, you would then find the bind C trick quite difficult because you would have to uh, unravel the entire object and pass that along to uh, NVIDIA or whatever compiler you're accelerating with. Mm -hmm.